The factual basis of this conclusion is the reference in the disbursement request and authorization to repay the $95,905.16 of the note. That was an exchange of credit of Bank One plaintiff for credit apparently and previously extended to defendants by Michigan National Bank. Also, there is no reason to believe the plaintiff would refuse a substitution of credit, notice substitution of credit, of another bank or banker. What is the definition of a financial institution? I hear private, private banker, banker is one definition. They can accept the note of another bank or banker, private banker, as complete repayment of the defendant's repayment obligation under the note. Exchanges, exchanges of money of account, exchanges, money of exchanges, account, credit, exchanges, exchanges, exchanges of money exchanges, of exchange, exchanges, money of exchange, exchanges, lawful exchanges, money, or even exchanges, legal tenor. Ironically, ironically, the note explicitly refers to repayment and lawful money of the United States of America. See promise to pay clause. Traditionally and legally, and legally Congress, Congress defines, defines the phrase lawful, lawful money, money for the United, United States. States. Traditionally, as defined by Congress, lawful money only included gold, silver, and currency notes redeemable for gold and silver on demand. Now, you see that right there? Traditionally, as defined by Congress, lawful, lawful Congress, money, lawful only money included gold, only silver, included gold and currency silver, notes redeemable and currency for gold and silver for on gold demand. And silver what on is demand? a redeemable currency note for gold and silver? Well, let's look at that. This is what, what he's talking about. This right here, see right here, twenty dollars. All right, all right. This right here says, what does it say at the top? This certifies that they have been put on deposit in the treasury of the United States of America, twenty dollars in gold coin, payable to the bearer on demand. So this is a gold certificate. I can take this to the treasury department, and they'll have to weigh up twenty dollars worth of gold and give it back to me. All right, this is how I could redeem my gold. But they didn't change this now. We don't have this. They gave us this, this bullshit right here. I right, gave us this right here. This is bullshit. It, no, it says Federal Reserve. Look, they look like our money. They made it look a lot like, you know, the original money. They didn't want to get nobody up in arms. So they made it look exactly the same, just change the words. It's a Federal Reserve note. This ain't redeemable for shit. This is a worthless fucking piece of paper. The only thing that is guaranteed, only reason it has value is because will, people are willing to accept it. It's a negotiable instrument. Where does that come from? That comes from mo modern money mechanics. Modern money, modern money mechanics. mechanics. I got to give y'all a right here. No, this from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. It always seemed like something coming out of Chicago, boy. I tell you. So right here, he says, "What? What makes money valuable?" In the United States, neither paper currency nor deposits have values as commodities. Intrinsically, a dollar bill is just a piece of paper. Deposits merely book entries. Coins do have some intrinsic value as metal, but generally far less than their face value. What then makes these instruments, checks, paper money, and coins acceptable at face value and payment of all debts and other monetary uses? Mainly, it is the confidence people have that they will be able to exchange such money for other financial assets and for real goods and services whenever they choose to do so. You see what these fucking people who print the goddamn money, all right, they print the shit, they give it to you, and you tell you, you, you see what they saying about their own goddamn money? This is, this is modern money mechanics. A workbook on bank reserves and deposits from the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. I had to do all of this. I, I hope y'all are writing this down like you knew people. You should be writing down all these different books I'm talking about. You know, you need to know what FASB 95 is. If you want to understand the accounting that's going on, page 21, well, under financial institutions. You need to know modern money mechanics. You need to have an understanding of GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. All right. You need to read the affidavit of Walker Todd. You want to have that on hand because then you're in a court case and somebody tries to use the vapor money theory against you. You'll have all this at your disposal to counter, to counter that argument if you need to do so. But you got to arm yourself with some sort of knowledge or the people going to make you look like a goddamn fool.